Welcome to the Beyond Jiu Jitsu <laughs> podcast. It's and New Year's Eve, bitches. Yeah, starting off New Year's with a Mexican standoff for the intro. <laughs> yeah, and I'm both looking at each other. Like, Who's going to take the intro? Yeah. Kieran has the soundboard. Usually I chime in every second intro. Mm. Guys, what is up? It is a New Year's Eve. New we Year's are- Eve. Bitches. Yeah, we are on episode 48 of the Beyond Jiu Jitsu podcast. My name's Adam Childs with my co host and the fresh owner of some bling bling. Bling it's bling, baby. Kieran Lefebvre. Otherwise known as Blue Belt Kieran. Blue Belt Kieran. Got your blue belt. <laughs> Got so, my blue belt. So, uh, you had your blue belt in the last episode we recorded it. It vaguely got mentioned, but we didn't really mm. go over it because it was just going to be. Let's yeah, be honest, steal over, the, steal overshadowed the yeah. by the black belt that yeah. Joey just got. <laughs> yeah, but, exactly. Um, if you didn't listen to that episode, episode number 47, we had Joey Joe Wellington on the uh, on the podcast. Excellent episode. Uh, definitely check that one out. Yeah, listen to that. He uh, is the owner of my very first black belt I've given mm. out. So that was cool. Yeah, and now I'm the owner of your 50th yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've, I've given a few, yeah. yeah. But, bro, let's – um. Let's start with that, our New Year's Eve conversation. Maybe there's mm. some listeners who are uh, listening to this as it's a live episode. You know, if you are, fucking dude, so impressed. Thank you so much because this is this airs on the 31st, like 5.30 in, in the afternoon, Australian Eastern Standard Time. So if you, instead of partying on New Year's, if you want to get your jiu-jitsu or beyond jiu-jitsu fix, damn, you're the real MVP. I mean, if you're like me and you're old and lazy and you don't yeah. do anything, I mean, I'm not going to be doing anything else on New Year's Eve. <laughs> you know? Well, like, I mean, I guess now Atlas, my son's getting a bit older, but like the last couple of New Year's, people are like, mm. man, what do you want to do New Year's Eve? And I'm like, well, my, man, yeah. my one-year-old will be asleep, you know, and but potentially wake up during, like, I'm not mm. doing anything. I'm yeah. not going anywhere, you know. Now he gets a bit older, but he's still like two and a half. So yeah. he ain't doing shit. My girlfriend has to like convince me and almost force me to stay up until midnight on New Year's Eve because I, you know, don't want to have Dude, a Dude, whenever I text you at 8.30 p.m., I know you're in bed. Yeah. You're tucked in already. Yeah, more I'm, not gonna he- I'm not going to hear from you till the morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, straight up. But maybe some people have got their, their, you know, they're making their list of New Year's resolutions and mm. they're thinking, man, next year's the year. I'm getting my blue belt. What I'm do you think about New Year's w- resolutions? Do, are you, do you partake in them or are you one of those I don't, man, goals shouldn't be – Dependent on fucking the time of year. I don't. I don't partake in them so much. Although in saying that, I'm, as I'm saying it, I'm realizing that I did do. A, I don't want to call it a New Year's resolution, but I did do this whole year, 2021. Um, you know, with not drinking any alcohol, just because in 2020 with the first COVID uh, lockdown. I just, it's not like I drank an absurd, well, no, I definitely drank too much, but I just went that whole, like, I think a lot of people with that very first lockdown, it was so out of the norm, something that none of us had ever experienced before. Didn't people were just, it. yeah, yeah. And I think a lot of people, myself included, were like, all oh, right, like, you know, forced unfor- holidays. yeah, forced <laughs> holidays, right? And so just kind of embraced way too much social drinking and everything. So this year it was more just a, a mini goal of, oh man. Just like, I just got to get rid of some of that. You know, I, yeah. I often go multiple periods of time without drinking alcohol if I'm preparing to compete or for whatever reason. So I did do that this year. I'm not someone who makes New Year's resolutions. Um, I maybe more would make a, a goal for that year. Like, let's say, for example, you know, uh, oh, okay, in, in 2022, like, that's that's the year I'm I'm gonna get a dog or something like you know like or 2022. That's the year like yep man like we've been living in this apartment for every year we say we're gonna move and we never do like 2022. Do it, yeah. That's the year we're moving apartment. So I don't think a new year resolution, but it's like a goal that's set within that year. Yeah, that's I do that I, every year. I set like yearly goals. They're not resolutions. They're goals. They're like you know deadlines. You know yeah. milestones. Etc. I, I mean, but I'm, it's it's not something I do every year. Like I don't write it down every mm. year. It's only if it's something that's in the front of my my forethought of like, oh yeah, I'm going to do this this year. Uh, but I get why people do it because I definitely when I start something new, that's a change in habit or whatever. I only ever do it on a Monday. Mm. Like, you know, if I'm like having to cut weight for a competition, 
Like I, I start my weight cut on the Monday. Like that start of the – like if you told me to start it on a Wednesday, nah. Like I, my willpower isn't there and I'll – So extrapolating that out to goals, it, it helps to start. Start of the year, we're hitting it like a clean slate, let's go. Yeah, clean slate, yeah. at least for me, right? Yeah, I, mean, some I people, totally relate to that. Although sometimes I have previously done the opposite with weight cutting, like that being sort of the more difficult part for me in preparing to compete. You know, it's – I think it's very well known that if anyone is doing any sort of diet or weight cut or whatever, the weekends tend to be the harder days mm. because that's usually your rest days or that's usually the days where there's social events. Like whereas at least during the week it's a bit more structured. You've got your yeah. Monday to Friday. You're flat out and you go to bed early. Yeah. yeah, so I have previously started my weight cut like on a, on a Saturday – so then it's kind of like I get those first those first two days are really hard, but I get those like harder days out of the way first. Mm. So then like the weekdays are easier. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, that but makes sense. Anyway, you don't have to set a blue belt as a New Year's resolution. Hey. Got your blue belt, bro. That was my that was my goal for this year. It was was it? Of, yeah, it was Fuck, one of my, one of my goals. So for this close year. to ruining that. Goal, bro. <laughs> I ummed and ahed for so long, man. And I was like, God, oh, we do the podcast together. Yeah. <laughs> you did slip me in that 50. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it was a goal for this year. I set that at the start of the year uh, or like, yeah, very start of the year, like January. It's one of my mini goals. So I set like m- like major goals uh, with like uh, big milestones and normally they're part of like five When did plans. you start training with me? I started in 2020 in September. Right. September right. 2020. Right. So I think. It was like yeah. post first lockdown. Yes. It was like right. pretty much first week post first lockdown. I remember you giving like thanks for supporting during lockdown speeches. And I was like. And you yeah. were like. Uh, <laughs> oh. awkward. Yeah. But you were like you, you framed it. I remember. I, I don't know why I remember this. But you were like, you know, saying something along the lines of like, you know, thanks for everyone's support of the gym um, during lockdown. And thanks so much for the new members for joining post lockdown. And Did know, I say that? Yeah. 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 You did. No, look at me go. Yeah. Yeah, you looked at me in the eyes. No. <laughs> <laughs> I was scared. I was like, oh, that hurt me. No, um, so, yeah, yeah, man. Um, Did you, how, how you know, because we hadn't spoken about, you know, like the, I don't think we had any conversations that would have given any inkling, I don't think, that I was giving out blue belts or giving your blue belt this year. I don't think, like. I, I predicted, I pre- well, if you were going to give blue belts, at the at because you you told me you were going to give out blue belts at the grading You're like yeah. oh there might be some blue belts here now and I was oh, I in my mind I was like um, Toby smear me did you <laughs> yeah straight up yeah but in in saying that like I I wasn't sure because it it one one point of me was like oh but you know I, I probably need to compete again rah 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 you know I I did want to compete at white belt again but I think I don't know if this is going to sound bad and it was going to sound bad and arrogant either way way I phrase it, but I think I wanted to compete a white belt again just to go on and smash, just to put some smash on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this, the belts that were given out, a- ignoring Joey's belt, mm. the black belt being a, a little different, mm. I gave out like Five I think belts. four blue belts and one purple belt. Yep. Right? Um, the circumstances were a little bit different. I think I'm not going to say the – the, the belts weren't given early, right? Because the way I do it, when I know someone is ready for a belt, for example, there's some people who didn't get belts uh, this past weekend who were maybe a little like butthurt about it. <laughs> but they're potentially people who I have already thought, oh, they're ready for their belt. But when I have that thought, that then starts the timer of when I, not the timer, but, you know, once I've had the thought of they're ready for their belt, they then wait a little longer. It's like a sort of just to be sure mm-hmm. sort of thing. So none of the belts that I gave out were given early, but it's kind of like because of the lockdown, it sort of messed everything up, mm-hmm. you know, like the same way that you've kind of had that that thought of, oh, I kind of wanted to compete more at white, but blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. Like that thought wouldn't even be in your head if we weren't forced to oh, be closed. I only three need months, one more, hey. Right? Yeah. Like, and yeah. even if you didn't compete again during that time, like you would have been training nonstop those yeah. three months. So there was a bit of a, like, you know, I'm not going to say it was early, but there was definitely a gap mm. in training. In the training, right? yeah. For, and I've spoken at length 
in some previous episodes. Uh, what was the one, the episode that we talked about? Um, like we, episode 46, was it? forty? What, what topic? Shh, shh, I'll figure it out. Quiet, Kieran. Episode 44? Episode 44, the Blue Belt Test, right? Have I got it? Yeah, oh, checks out. God, thank God. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and I've spoken before about the different categories of everyone's on their own journey, right? You mm. know, but some people do it as a hobby, competitors, right? And three of the belts I gave out, you, Toby, and Samir, the three you mentioned, are all competitors. Uh, you and Samir maybe a little more so than Toby, just in the sense that Toby also like, um, it's not like you and Samir don't work, but Toby isn't necessarily making the same sacrifices to pursue jujitsu, mm. you know, like, like you and Samir are a little bit more like you would kind of like blow off work to train. Whereas I think Toby's still a little bit the other way around. Like if he has to work, he has to work, which is fine. Right. Mm. But you're all definitely in the same category in terms of your caliber as competitors. And, and for me, I was like, you know, I, yeah, I could have, seeing you compete again at white belt would have been cool. But I think the, the reason that the thought of, oh, is it a bit early or whatever is irrelevant is because for you three, the best thing for your jujitsu at this point in time is to have you competing at blue belt, yeah. right? Like it's not like you wouldn't have learned anything from doing another comp at white belt, but it's not where the most value is for you at, the, the particular point in your progression. Like for you three, I want to see you competing at Blue Belt ASAP. Mm. And, you know, this is coming out New Year's Eve. So come 2022, you know, fingers crossed, there's not another new COVID variant, lockdown, all that stuff. Hopefully it is just no more lockdowns is the approach that Australia has taken and competitions are back in full swing in 2022 because they did make an effort to do a last competition here in Australia. It was going to be in Sydney, going to be December 11th or something like that, mm -hmm. but that got cancelled. So, uh, you know, hopefully 2022 come usually the first comps around February or something. Yeah. I already want to see you guys competing at Blue Belt. Yep. And yeah, it's going to be hard, right? It's a step up from White Belt, but I think it's going to be the best thing for your progression as jujitsu competitors. Totally agree. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking I was talking to Samir about it after a class, and I don't mind mentioning it now because it's like sort of, you know, after the case. Samir, for those that don't know, brown belt in judo, um, very, very good judo competitor, now blue belt in jujitsu. And we're talking about competition and we're, you know, both frothing on competition and we're both sort of saying like we we're keen to compete at blue belt like we're you know not that oh we're so ready for blue belt but we're ready to ready to like jump in and, and compete at blue belt and you know really test the metal there because white belt division is very hit and miss you can have guys that are like you know this is their last comp at white belt you know what i mean and they're about to get promoted the next day sort of thing so they've been a white belt for like 18 months or whatever and they're you know, you know really strong tough competitors like hypothetically if i did a competition now at white belt you know, coming against someone, you know, in my sort of position, or you can have someone that's in the position when I, I did my first comp, like three yeah. months in. Yeah. Cause the difference is like at white belt, you can get someone at the end of their white belt journey or someone at the start and blue belt, of course, competing at blue belt, you can get someone at the end of their blue belt journey or the start of their blue belt journey. But the yeah. difference is the start of someone's white belt journey. The other side of that is zero jujitsu. Exactly. Whereas you go up against someone at the start of their blue belt journey, the other side of that is like, well, a they really were still a, a white, white belt, belt yeah, right? Yeah. So um, yes, you're still good. And he still can be hit and miss in terms of you could get someone like super good, super experienced and someone not so much. Mm -hmm. But at least if you're going against someone who's a brand new blue belt, they've still got one, maybe two years, depending, like, you know, you don't know, mm -hmm. but they've still trained. Whereas you get a brand new white belt in your matchup, you know, like it's it's maybe sometimes people jump into competition after a month of training, right? Yeah, I wasn't I wasn't too far off. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but it's funny. Uh, we got one student, no gi Rob. Ah, uh, uh, no gi Rob. <laughs> no gi Rob. He's a, a a white belt with us. He's super good training partner, tough dude. Um, we call him no gi Rob just because he likes no gi more than more than gi, and uh, and he previously trained at Absolute MMA with Lockie, and um. The rule in our gym 
is that, you know, we teach all the leg locks and everything to everyone, but in roles, it's only blue belts and up who I let do them. And even then, it's not like blue belts are ripping on heel hooks. It's like sort of catch and release Mm. sort of thing like that. But obviously very important to learn because some competitions nowadays let blue belts heel hook, you know, or purple belts heel hook. So you got to learn it, right? And yeah, when you got your blue belt, like one of the first things Nogi Rob said, who is a white belt, but I mean, you could maybe say he's, at least in leg locks, let's say he's a blue belt or in, let's say Nogi Rob's a blue belt in Nogi, mm. hypothetically, because he's trained so much with Lachlan. So uh, you got your blue belt and he was like, yes, I can heel hook Kieran, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <it's> so funny. <laughs> I can, classic Nogi classic Rob. Classic Nogi Rob with his Nogi antics. <laughs> uh, How do you feel about it? Oh, super stoked. Like super, super stoked. Even even my so, girlfriend's so when, stoked. So yeah, yeah, she she wrecked you hard, bro. Oh dude. She's yeah. like not embarrassed to yeah. be with you anymore. Yeah, exactly. Uh so like the order I gave out the belts, I think I gave Samir first, yep. right? Uh and so once I gave that first blue belt, it was wh- Samir, Harry, Toby, me. Right. Yep. So look at you. So oh, man, so once I gave memory. <laughs> once I gave that first belt, were you instantly like, yep, I'm getting mine today? Well, yeah, if Samir gets it, if like what if I mean it would have been funny if I didn't get it. Like if you I should have left it. If you if you I left take it, it, I take if it you left it, it would have been one part of me would have like found it hilarious. Other part of me would have been like Furious. torn. <laughs> like really like um I don't know, depressed. Not depressed, that's that's a bit extreme. More like just like fuck, what the hell? <laughs> Cause Samir and I started training literally within three days of each other. I yeah. started, I did my trial on the Friday. He did his the following week on like the Wednesday. And we like, we've, we've figured it out a couple of times. And because we're both so new, we used to partner up with each other every single time. Like we'd always roll with each other, always partner up. Like, you know, he would definitely have the upper hand on me a lot um, in, in the beginning, but then we slowly caught up and, and, you know, we, we've had lots of really good ro- roles and like, you know how you've mentioned it so many times on, on the podcast before where you have like one or two people where you're really close with the gym and they, they become like your best training partners. Toby and Samir, the two guys that got promoted with me and, and Harry as well, but Toby and Samir are like my best training partners. Very similar weight. We all compete, you know, within five kilos of each other. Uh, we've all competed about the same amount. Toby has a little bit more experience, but more or less, we have the same experience in the gym and we're, you know, trained consistently, rah, rah, rah. So seeing those two guys get their blue belt, it would have been really funny. Yeah. If I, like, really funny. Dude, to- Toby <laughs> trained this morning and um, he, God, man, he went hard first yeah. thing this morning, 7 a.m. class after mm. he trained last night as well. He did. He did. We had some good Dude, roles. Dude, he came in first thing he was, and this morning's class was no gi. So can I get a rashi? Got a blue yeah. belt rashi. I'm like, I got to get one. Straight, bro. Get one. Yeah. Dude, he was like, Went hard straight away. Yeah. Like he shot so hard on Alex. Alex is like a old rugby player and, you know, is not a competitor. He has competed. Mm. But Alex is like, he's not like you and Toby and Samir in your 20s. Like mm. Alex is 40. He's got three kids, very successful career. Mm. Still a very tough person to train and roll with. First person so, to ever choke me out. Yeah, right. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah, baseball bat choke. But like, you know. Toby shot on him super hard and Alex is sprawling hard. And like, I was like, man, this is like heavy for 7 yeah. a.m. So it, interesting, just on the whole blue belt piece, uh, Adu, one of the senior blue belts at our gym. Um, now a four striper. Now a four striper. Lovely, Although lovely you guy. you can't tell because his belt yeah, is like so one tatted. of the ones without man. the black bar on it. Yeah, so. yeah. And it's like the oldest blue belt. Anyway, um, Adu said something on my first class as wearing the belt and he's, he's sort of like eyeing us off and, and you know, like, he, he said something along the lines of, I wonder if he's still going to be hungry or like, is he going to be hungry? Because, you know, when you're, when you feel like you're close to your blue belt at white belt, you go fucking hard. Like yeah. every, every role is like, yeah, I need to, I need to roll like a blue belt. I need to prove this. Rah, rah, rah. You got, you got a chip on your shoulder. You got something to prove. And then I just looked at him like dead in the eye and go, I'm hungrier. Like, <laughs> and uh, along the lines of, you know, what you're talking about with whole new years, like new year's resolutions, goals and everything. I have a bit of a, I've been thinking about this the last few days. I have a bit of a plan for 2022 or more like a, a goal that I'm going to set for myself or like an attitude I'm going to set for myself, a, a resolution, if you will. And that is to, it's going to sound weird, but like take jujitsu training seriously. Not that I haven't. And that's why it sounds weird, but like start to look at it like an athlete, be like, okay, I'm, you know, yeah, just a blue belt, whatever. But let's, let's see what, what happens. Like if I, if I do train really seriously, start looking at um, implementing nutrition, which I do already, but like consistently 
uh, implement a lot of different things that I can be doing around my jiu-jitsu and approach it like an athlete. You know, fuck it, let's see what happens in in two years because that's pretty much the the scope two to three years at Blue Belt. You know, um, that's what I'm sort of the expectation I'm setting for myself is to be ready for Purple Belt in about two three years. So in that in those two years, let's see what can happen on the competition scene. Like fuck it, yeah. You know, well, we'll be, as soon as we get some dates for the 2022 competitions yeah well, i'll be i'll be rallying rallying the troops to get everyone in there yeah 100 percent. um but yeah man i don't know if you if, if you ever lose that sort of like hunger or or chip on the shoulder because now as a hungry, blue belt yeah. right it's you know you've only done you've done two classes now with your blue belt yeah right and so this might not resonate with some people but i think any competitor this would resonate with even against your friendliest training partner. Like it is still it's friendly competition. Like one of the ways that I describe jujitsu to someone who, uh, who maybe doesn't train it or understand it is I kind of like, I kind of say, man, training with your friends slash training partners. I said, it's like if you and I were playing Mario Kart, like if we're playing Mario Kart, like I want to win the race. Right. And if you win the race, like I'm going to be like, Ugh, yeah, go again. <laughs> let's go again, right? Yeah. Like, you know, that's the competitive. It doesn't mean I hate you or whatever. It's just jujitsu is that, but physical, right? And so, but then when now you've got a blue belt, it's like this rank. Like, so imagine if we were playing Mario Kart and we had rankings mm. and, you know, or, okay, here we go, back to Formula One. Yeah. You know, like imagine, <laughs> you know, I'm the Formula One driver and you're a Formula Two driver. Like, I want to be showing that, like, you're not in my league yet, bro. Yeah, like yeah, there's levels, you've, son. Yeah, you, you've got to qualify to make it into Formula One. You're still a Formula Two driver, right? And so it's kind of the same thing. Now, as a blue belt, you're going to be wanting to, to A, show that you're on the same level as all the other blue belts. So you want to, you want to be showing at least you're maintaining the status quo that against any other blue belt in the gym, they could win or you could win, right? Like you're yep, on their level, right? the more senior blue belts are going to want to be showing that they're pretty much their purple belt, meaning yeah. that you're not on their level. Yeah. But then it goes the other way as well. Now wearing a blue belt, don't get me wrong. There's nothing wrong with being a black belt and getting tapped by a white belt. Not every role is a competition role and it's all a learning experience and training. So, you know, like I'm not saying that if I looked over and saw you get tapped by a white belt, I'm not going to be sitting there thinking, oh, Kieran doesn't deserve his blue belt. But, you know, as a, in a bit of a nutshell, you as a blue belt want to be showing that, you know, hey, like I'm a blue belt. I'm not going to lose to this this white belt, right? Of course, that's in context, right? But uh, if hypothetically, let's say it's competition training, well, then you're going to – but that white belt's going to be wanting to show that he's exactly. on the level of a blue belt. Yeah. So, you know, so that sort of chip on the shoulder or that hunger it kind of needs to stay there. Oh, yeah. Um, and then it only gets harder, bro, because then when you're a purple belt, you don't want to be like losing to all the blue belts. Like that doesn't look good. You want to be starting to be able to hang with the brown belts to show that, you know, and it, so the, the level of expectation like never fades. Yeah. You know? If anything, and then it just it, increases. Yeah. And yeah. then as a black belt, you're then like, you know, oh, so I'm even, na- even now as a black belt, obviously, you know, I'm not old, but I'm older than I was. Obviously, <laughs> it's like it's like it's like uh, I don't know if you know the comedian Mitch Hedberg. No. He's uh he's no longer alive, unfortunately, but he's a super super funny comedian. Really like stoner comedy, like um, you know, like one of his jokes is he's like, man, he's like all like super high. He's like, man, like bananas. No, what's he goes like traffic lights are like no no. Something to do with banana. Hang on, wait. I'll <laughs> get this. Terrible. Shut up. This is a terrible joke. He goes. Uh, he goes um. Like, man, bananas are like the opposite of traffic lights. You know, he's like, because green means like, whoa, 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 slow down. He's <laughs> like, yellow means go ahead. And red means where the fuck you get a red banana? <laughs> it's just like <laughs> random shit yeah. like that. Yeah. Or actually one of his best jokes, he's like, man, as a comedian, like I write jokes all the time, blah, blah, blah. So when I think of something funny, like I write it down. It's like, so sometimes I'm in the hotel traveling and I think of something funny, but the pen's really far away. 
So he's like, I either got to get up and get the pen or convince myself what I thought of ain't funny. <laughs> <laughs> that is good. He's, he's, actually, he's, a, really, he's a really good comedian. I, I'm not sure. He may have passed away from a drug overdose. <laughs> I'm not really sure. Yeah. But um, what was I saying about Mitch Hedberg? What were we saying before this? You were, I don't know. It's levels. Expectation. Black belt. Tapping. Anyway. Oh, man, I've, it was like really relevant. Yeah. <laughs> then you talk about bananas. bananas. Fuck, and then I just started remembering funny Mitch Hedberg jokes. And I fucking <laughs> forgot. Oh, the I'm audience so probably like, oh, talk about that. You talk about this. I yeah, I know. I all the time yelling at the podcast people. Yeah, I'll like go host. back and listen to the podcast yeah. and I'll be like, that's yeah. what I was going to say. But I will say that I've never legitimately tapped a black belt before. And now that Joey's a black belt, I'm hunting for that tap. Yeah. So in the last episode, Joey mentioned, which was new to me, mm. that he had mentioned that uh, he's got a, he's put a bounty on himself that yeah. the first person, the first lower belt, so it doesn't yeah. apply to other black belts, but the first, um, the first lower belt to, to tap him as a new black belt that Joey is will win a free dinner. Yeah. And yeah. man, like I think. And cause it can happen, right? Like, I mean, sometimes in training you, you give a little bit, like you let the line out a little bit too much and then it gets away from you. Yeah. Even as, and then as hey, the I higher the belt against a lower belt, mm. you then don't, it snowballs and you can't yeah. recover and you get tapped. I'm not mentioning any names, but um, this is before promotion. I was rolling with a guy that, you know, tell, you know, there's a skill difference, right? The skill difference, strength difference, whatever. I let the line out too much. I was like, yeah, fuck it. I'll let him take my back. I'll, you know, want to play this game, see if I can escape, rah, rah, rah. Yeah, cool. Everything's fine. He's got my back. It's fine. I can get out of this. Then his arm comes over for the real naked joke. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that's fine. And then the, the arm locked in and he had it all of a sudden, like, I just let that line out. All of a sudden I was in a deep rear naked choke and I was just gurgling. <laughs> like, I held it for not quite a minute, but probably like 45 seconds. And he was fucking crunching down. He had to like stop and release and then crunch again. And it just, I would not, uh, I, in my mind, I was like, no way. You, you Like I was punishing myself. You would not fucking tap. <laughs> and, and, oh, and, it was so bad. And Kieran's been eating soup through a straw yeah, since. <laughs> yeah, 100%. Like I, I was so, in my mind, I was like, you were not tapping. You were not like, I was so mad at myself for letting it out that little bit too yeah. much, getting in too deep of a water and I couldn't escape. Yeah. And yeah, I got punished. But I think that, um, you know, the, the expectation, yeah, it only it only increases. So, mm. so as I was saying, like even even now, uh, as a black belt who is starting to get to get older, I can kind of <laughs> use that as an excuse. Oh, I'm old now, right? Even though I'm not. But like when a if a brown belt comes into the gym that I don't know, or another black belt comes into the gym, it's not like you know it's. I think sometimes people get the wrong impression that it's like that you're trying to gym in force or whatever, but it's like, it's it, it being a physical competitive sport, you know, the actual rolling is one of the best ways to, to prove your, your level or your quality of jujitsu, you know? So if, you know, if you came into my, my tennis class that I run a tennis course or a tennis class. And then we have a match of tennis and you just demolished me and beat me, you know, six love, six love, six love. Like you're going to be looking across going like this guy's supposed to be a tennis pro. Yeah. I've, why, what I've am I paying ten, for? I've, yeah. yeah. Why am I going to pay you money? I've played tennis for a year and I just beat him, like mop the floor with him. You know, it's just that jujitsu happens to be a combat sport that then it can kind of be seen as like, Oh man, like, you bashed him or whatever or, you know, mm. however people want to look at it. So, yeah, I don't have that mentality. But if a new brown belt or, or black belt comes into the gym, I'm not saying that I'm – it's not possible for me to lose to them or I'm going to, you know, throw a tantrum if I lose to them. But you want to kind of show that, hey, man, like, yeah, you want to come train with me. Like, I'm going to show you my pedigree. Like, so when we roll, like, mm. I'm going to smash you. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, like 100%. I'm trying to say that without sounding like you're just some dickhead who wants to beat up people. Well, I was doing that like if a new blue belt came to the gym, like wearing a blue belt, that's indicating that they know what, what's going on at least. They they have trained before. So it's like, you know, it's on, like green light. And uh, if, a, if a new blue belt comes to the gym, I don't know, maybe they're trying the gym out or whatever they're new. Fucking maybe they're just in for a drop-in. Like it's on. Like yeah. I feel out the first fucking like – 
30 seconds. Is that then- why you keep looking over and being like, hey, ads, ads, this guy signed the waiver, right? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, Karen, you're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100%. Like it's, you know, it's representing, you want to represent the gym. You want to like show, hey, look, we, we fucking know what's going on here. Adam's great instructor. This is what I've learned. This is, this is where our white belts are at, you know, yeah. or this is where our blue belts are at or whatever. Like it's representing. You're not yeah, trying and to- Yeah, and I've hurt. had a lot of people come through the gym or- uh, friends who train at other gyms visit or instructors mm. from other gyms visit or whatever and pretty much unanimously they'll say something like, man, like your white and blue belts are really good. And that's like the base of the gym being a, a newer gym. Yeah. You know, I'm not someone with a massive name that when I opened the gym like brown and black belts flocked to train with me. Mm. And yeah, some people are going to be like sandbagger, but I've said multiple times before, no, it's not sandbagging, it's just fucking standards, did you, bro. Did I you hear that like, when I got promoted? People were like, sandbag, sandbag. Did they? I didn't hear that. <laughs> I, I, I sort of like, I, I remember hearing it, but Zach pointed it out to me. He's like, oh, when you got promoted, everyone was like, sandbag. Uh, <laughs> I didn't hear that. <laughs> I don't even know if they're saying to sandbag me or that I have been sandbagged. I don't, yeah. I don't even well, know. Well, I mean, what it wouldn't be possible about. to say you have been sandbagged because no, no. you've. You've trained for what, like a year? Yeah, like just over. Four, 14 months and yeah. three months of those were locked down. Exactly. You know, so yeah. I mean, pretty much the, the standard for someone who trains a decent amount is a yeah. year at white belt. Yeah. You know, but and yeah, I maybe mean, if they were calling that I should be sandbagging you. Um, no, that's funny. It's still possible. <laughs> I mean, did you throw out your white belt? You still got it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, well, course. Uh, I framed it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't keep my old belt, say. Eh? No, Pe- really? Yeah, people ask me, you know, are you going to. Because I know heaps of people who keep all their old belts and frame them or put them on yeah, a rack or something. Yeah, it. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Like, um, it's not like I look at it and go, ooh, cringe. I think, but for me, I thought, mm. you know, I was like, oh, well, the goal was always black belt. You know, for me, uh, the analogy I've given multiple times is I look, I approach jujitsu like it was like a university degree. Yeah. You know, so. I love that. Um, for me, it was always like, no, 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 like the black belt's the goal, like yeah. getting my doctorate or whatever, like that's the goal. So keep me. It's not like I when I got my next belt, I was like <laughs> and threw out <laughs> and threw out my other belts. Yeah. But I just didn't make an effort to to keep them. Like for example, my brown belt, I think, is currently being used like to hold something up at home. It's like got something tied in a knot. That's hilarious. My blue belt is hanging in the gym. My oh, pl- is it actually? Yeah, that one that's hanging like on the door. That's, that's your old blue belt. That's my old blue belt. Oh yeah. shit, there you go. The, my purple belt in a kid's class, the kids were playing tug of war with it and it ripped in half. So that's <laughs> thrown in the bin. And my white belt is, I don't know, for all I know, back in Canada. Like yeah, I have right. no idea where my white belt is. There you go. But you know, so keeping the, my previous belts in the with the idea of oh like frame these or these mementos or whatever kind of felt like you know if i'm doing a four a four year degree at uni uni and keeping the results of that like test i passed in my second year of uni i'm like man yeah. no one fucking like it no doesn't cares. you could have failed that test like but if you still part like if you still pass the course like if you still get your degree yeah. in four years time, doesn't like matter. it doesn't yeah. matter. Like no one cares about that because yeah. you've got that final degree. That's the only one that matters. Yeah. So I'm not trying to take anything away from lower belts or from people who quit jujitsu at lower belts. Mm. Because when we did the episode talking about uh, why blue belts quit jujitsu, which was ages ago, God, it'll take me an hour on the mm. spreadsheet to find what episode that was. Hang on. (laughs) You know, like for some people that was their degree. Like that was their their goal. Jiu-Jitsu wasn't a lifelong passion and pursuit for them. So I'm not trying to take anything away from people with the lower belts or people who framed their lower belts. It was just for me individually, it just didn't really hold a lot of sentimental value Mm. to me. What about your medals from competition? Did you keep those? I've kept them, but I don't even know where they are. Yeah, uh, I was I think, thinking about that. And I think... Um, I mean, I didn't... Like I said, I didn't have as much competition success as I would have liked. I think, you know, my medals are just sitting somewhere at home in a bag. Mm. I actually don't even know. If you asked me... If you came over and were like, bro, show me show me your medals, uh, it would take me ages to... I don't even know where they are. Yeah, I, I think mine are like packed away somewhere and, you know... But, but I think that would definitely be different. Like if I had one worlds or something like that's different. Yeah. You yeah, know, like yeah. I, I mean, I've still got some medals that were important to me, like, you know, like making it the podium at the Pan Ams and stuff yeah, like that. Was, they're probably like my nicer medals that I have, but some of the other ones, just the generic 
gold, silver and bronze medals I have, yeah. like I couldn't even tell you what belt I was. Like if I just picked a medal up, I wouldn't even know. they're all the same, that, you know, they're all like. Yeah, they're all just, they all vaguely yeah. look very similar. I yeah. wouldn't be able to tell you what that was from. But if yeah. you win worlds at, at any colour belt, right, or a podium at, at any colour belt at the worlds or something, like, yeah, that's that's holds much more weight and I would be. Like if I pulled out my Pan Am medals, I could tell you like yeah, that these, makes these were for when I was blue belt, middle heavy and absolute, yeah. you know. I'm thinking that next year what I'll do is, and even the ones that I have, I, I know some guys brought in their medals for the gym. Yeah, so when I, during lockdown and I was just doing cleaning and stuff at the gym, I just hung some of the medals up on the wall. Yeah. I think one of them, I think a couple are mine, others are just medals that students were like, here, do you want this? Mm. Or whatever, and I was like, hey, I'll just put them on the wall. Why not? Yeah, right. Just a bit of decoration. So now more people are starting to bring in their medals, and yeah. once I get a big enough collection that warrants me getting out the ladder, yeah, I'll, I'll put them up on the wall too. Yeah, I'm, I'm probably going to bring mine in, and like next year, like the medals. I was thinking about it. Like, why not? Well, like, they're just them, sitting in them, a have them somewhere bag you know? somewhere. Now I'm actually now that this episode is fucking pissing me off, bro. Two things now. I can't remember what I wanted to say <laughs> about Mitch Hedberg, and now I'm starting to think. Where are my medals? Where are my medals? <laughs> I'm like, what? I'm like, where are my Pan Am? Medals? I want to take like, this opportunity to ask you something that I've been thinking about um, since promotion, and I actually had a decent chat with um, Aaron, our purple belt instructor at the gym, yesterday about it, and uh, it was basically I was thinking about okay, now we're blue belt competition 2022. Toby and I are the same weight because I've decided I've competed at. It's funny. Samir is competes at 82 kilos, and Toby. Com- compete at 88 i've competed at both and i think unanimously i've decided next year at least for the first Samir few and toby sandwich I like yeah that. i'm <laughs> straight between so I, I i'm in between of them um, right i can go either i can go 88 or i can go 82 i'm comfortable ish in both but i think i'm going to try and, and go 88 right for next year now and if i don't i'll be 82 with samir and we'll be competing pretty much at all the comps at the local comps and i'm thinking you know it's maybe not straight away, but it's a good chance eventually we'll end up closing out brackets. Hopefully that's the goal. And for those that don't know, normally if you compete with a teammate, they put you on the opposite end of the bracket so that, you know, you don't compete with each other. You don't get each other in the first seed. You, you end up working out that you'll, if, if you both win everything, you'll be in the finals together. And I was asking Aaron, I was like, Hey man, what would you think? You know, cause because Toby (gasps) is such a, you know, I've spoken about it so many times and man, I'm fucking have a crush on Toby. We talk about him that much that we, we always have really, really good competitions together. We would compete really, you know, in the gym, it's f- furious competition. If we close out a bracket, how would we approach it? Would we compete or would we just shake hands, do rock, babe, scissors and, and, you know, maybe I get the win on the record. He takes the medal home or we'll probably yeah. just hang the medal up in the gym and then, you know, we'll rock, babe, rock off for the, for the record, right? <laughs> rock off. I haven't yeah. heard that, but rock all right. off. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I just wanted your opinion because well, I'll tell you what we ended up discussing and we sort of were in what, agreement. But, what did you agree? But to I want, I want your opinion first. Well, for me, it's whatever you guys decide, like you can, you can fight for it. You can decide like, Hey man, you take this one. Like if you're competing enough and closing out enough, you know, it's very commonplace to be like, man, you take this one. I, the next one's my turn. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, this is if you if you're meeting in the finals, right? Yeah. Like, let's say you meet in the semifinals. It's maybe a bit more common to say something like, you know, maybe I turn to you, I'm like, oh man, I tweaked my back a little bit in that yep. last match. I'll I'll sit this one out. You take the win, yep. so you can fight the final. Or you might go, oh man, like, I've fought this dude heaps, and I, every time I beat him, let me take, you know, and you'll go, cool, cool, you go, and I'll take the final and yep. fight that dude who I always beat. Yeah. If it's closing out the final. Yeah, you can either fight for it or, you, man, you take this one, I take the next one or, hey, man, you take the win on record but I take the gold medal home, mm. you know. I think it, if it's just small local competitions, it doesn't really matter. It's whatever yeah. works for you guys. If it's bigger, like let's say you were closing out at the Worlds or something, mm. I mean it's got more weight behind it so it's up to you guys. There's some competitions that don't let you close out you know, like ADCC doesn't let you close out. Like yeah, you have in, to compete. And if you, if they think that you're, you're like going it, soft, yeah, they'll, yeah, they'll penalize. Both, yeah, 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 yeah. I've um, heard of that. But they're, they're, that's pretty far and few between. Yeah, yeah. So really it's just up to you guys. I don't like the, I mean, I've fought teammates before. Mm. Um, I don't really enjoy it, but. 
you know, I get why some people do it. Like, I mean, yeah. it's hard, man. If it's someone you train with every day, five days a week, it's you gonna know, be tough. It's weird to compete against them. But yeah. I've, but, but I've, I've, <laughs> one of our lights just ran out of battery. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I've done it. Yeah. You know? So I with, don't know. What do you? What conclusion well, did you guys come to? With Toby and I specifically. We, uh, you know, it could go either way. Sometimes I catch him. Um, a lot of times he catches me. Like it, but the point I'm trying to make is like in our roles in the gym, they're so back and forth. A lot of the time no one is able to sub anyone and it would literally be on advantage or points or, or what have you. It's very back and forth. And if it was in the semis, we, our battle would be that taxing that whoever went on would lose. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And you mentioned this in a previous episode, um, whereas like you're saying in order for you to beat me, I want to take everything that's from That's a good – That's a, I mean, actually, I have, I've never thought about that from a teammate versus teammate point of view. Man, unless in someone has a clear ep- advantage, like, man. Yeah, like in the last episode with Joey, I was talking about how I had this one teammate in Brazil, mm. Hafa, who, yeah, man, if – and we did actually compete against each other a couple of times. Mm. But, yeah, we trained together so much in the later years that, yeah, if we were, like, in our later years – of training together as purple and brown belts. When we competed against each other, we were blue belts. But by the time we were purple and brown belts, man, our roles together, I never thought about it. Exactly what you said. If mm. we fought each other in the semifinals, whichever one of us won would lose the final because we would be wrecked. And I reckon like, unless something like freak happened, like, you know, a sub got caught or something like that early, if Toby and I competed together in the semifinals, you'd both be, we'd both you'd lose. be puking. We would yeah, lose the finals yeah. and the team would lose the finals. You know what I mean? So in that situation, 100% we would, I would say to him, look, let's, let's figure this like out. Like who feels better on who the feels day. Better. And then yeah. if one of us wasn't like, or if I could tell we were both kind of like, oh, I kind of want to do it. Then we'll just, you know, do a rock off yeah, for it. Rock, and then, paper, scissor yeah. or something. And then we'll go for there and, yeah. you know, just do a walkover, right? We'll do something like that. Uh, however, if it was in the finals, I was I'm an iron like I used to think nah fuck it we'll just we'll just compete we'll just fight it out but now I'm like thinking you know what I don't really I mean that's a that's a boundary I don't really want to get in the habit of crossing particularly with someone like Toby or Samir because you know we we train together like pretty much every day every time Toby trains I'm there as well more or less unless it's mornings you know we have such wars I don't want to ruin that I don't want to ruin our training I want our training to say almost sacred right and this training makes us better in competition. So let's keep that where it is and not have any competition leak over into the into the training room, if that makes sense. So yeah. in saying that, if we did get in that situation, you know, big if, uh, but if we did close a bracket, I would probably want to not compete for it unless it was for something like Worlds. But even then, shit, man, if <laughs> Toby and I would close out Worlds, that's like, you know, Fuck. It'd almost be the least of your yeah, worries. You'd dude, just be we, like, fuck dude, it, sick. Who cares? Yeah, <laughs> if we yeah. take first and second home worlds, fucking well, who cares? Or well, something like worlds, then it is like a, it is a tough decision to mm. – because let's say you did do something like, all right, man, you take the, the win on record, but yeah. I get to take the gold medal home. Like if if you were presented with that that question, which one would you choose? Like it's hard. It's like oh man, I won the record. It'd be sick. No, we want the medal. Like <laughs> no, I don't know, man. Like a like okay, maybe not at blue belt, but imagine at yeah. black belt. Like yeah. imagine physically having your black belt world's gold medal. Yeah, like that's a special medal. Yeah. So then it's like you know, That'd whereas be tough, man, whereas the record is something. I, like it's always – it'll always be on record but yeah. like you don't have the physical medal. Like I think for me I would struggle to make that choice. If, if my, well, if I my hope that we close said, out a bracket together because I'm taking the record, baby. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, That'd be tough. That'd be really tough. Guys, we're actually going to already wrap up this episode because it's New Year's Eve. you got shit to do. <laughs> I will finish with a bit of good news which is I remembered the Mitch Hedberg thing um, but I'm not going to tell you. Uh, so I could, but it's way out of context now. It's not even going to be funny. But the good news is you remembered. The good news is <laughs> I remembered. Okay. Actually, no, I'm going to tell you now. All right. Because when I said something stupid like, oh, I'm older now, older than I was before, yeah. or something like that, reminded me of a Mitch Hedberg joke where, as I was saying, he's a big stoner. And it was like someone was like, hey, man, like here, let me show you a photo of when I was younger. And he's like, man, every photo is of your younger Unless you get That's some magical camera. <laughs> it's like I mean, <laughs> super obvious like yeah. stoner thought mentality. Yeah. But it is right. People say that. They're like, oh, man, here's a photo of when I was younger. And you're like, yeah, no fucking shit, bro. What if you got <laughs> some like magic camera? <laughs> of course it's when you're younger, uh, you know. Anyway, I remembered that. Now I'll just go home, find my medals and 
I can relax. We'll hang them up on the wall in the studio here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my girlfriend pe- pe- would not be a fan pe- of that. Pe- people are like, you got a lot of bronze medals up there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, two. <laughs> <laughs> What's that, a participation award? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish they had those. Anyway. Guys, thanks. happy New Year's. Happy New Year's. If you're listening to this live. If not, I mean, well, that's cool too. Yeah. Hope you had a good New Year's. Yeah, wherever you are in the world. And thanks for listening. You can find us at uh, on Instagram at Beyond Jiu Jitsu underscore podcast. We are also on Patreon and we're on YouTube as well. If you've never watched the YouTube version of the podcast, check it out. Yeah. Thanks for listening. 